Hey everyone, this is Lomi, and today I'm starting Rillin's outfit at the top. I'll be making him a typical Renaissance-style toque. Lots of people call these muffin hats, but as I learned last week, don't let a milliner hear you say that because they get really annoyed. These hats are great because they're super easy to make. They're just two pieces. The first piece is a circle for the top of the hat. According to my costuming book, one made for a human adult should use a circle of fabric 24 inches in diameter. That means for a one-third scale doll, you'd make a circle 8 inches across, for a one-quarter scale doll, 6 inches across, and for a one-sixth scale doll, 4 inches across. Of course, you may want to adjust this depending on your particular doll and the fabric you're using, but this is a good starting point. So that's the circle. The second piece is the band, which is just a long strip. My book said to make this 8 or 9 inches wide for a human, which would make it 3 or 4 inches tall, which seems kind of big. But I guess we'll give it a try. I'll try a 1 inch tall band for Rillin. Meaning with seam allowances included, this will need to be 2 and a half inches wide. The length of the band will be the circumference of your doll's head. When taking this measurement, make sure you measure over the top of the doll's wig. Leave a little wiggle room and measure around the point you want this hat to fit. On my doll, this seems to be about seven and a quarter inches around. For Rillin's hat, I'm using red pen fabric. It's a little stretchy, which is great for the floppy top, but not great for the band. So to help the band keep its shape and let it stand better, I'll also be using a lightweight fusible interfacing. So I'll cut the band first. I square up the side of the fabric here, then measure out the length of the band. It's the doll's head measurement, which was seven and a quarter inches, plus one quarter of an inch on either end for the seam allowance. That gives me a total length of seven and three quarters inches. Then I mark the two and a half inch height. You can see I'm avoiding the selvage, which is those dots at the edge of the fabric. On knit fabrics, the selvage tends to curl a lot, so it would be hard to use for this. I use my rotary cutter and metal ruler to cut out the band. Then I trim off the selvage. Nice and easy. Next, I lay the fabric on my fusible interfacing and cut that out too. It'll be ironed together this way, so the interfacing will be attached to the back side of your fabric. But before I iron, I want to finish cutting my material. This fabric is so full of dog hair. It's amazing how she's never even been in this room and she still gets hair on my supplies. Huskies, right? To cut out the circle for the top of the hat, I fold the fabric in half, then fold it in half the other way. So I have a piece of material four layers thick. The top corner here is the center of the circle. I 
I pin the material so it won't move. Then I'll measure out from the corner, marking half the diameter I want, since this is folded. I want to circle 6 inches across, so I mark 3 inches. I move the measuring tape to mark this distance at a bunch of different points, always measuring out from the corner. Then I roughly connect the dots to make my curve. This doesn't need to be perfectly circular, so don't stress over it. Cut out the material and unfold it. Voila! A mostly circle. Kind of a rounded square, isn't it? Doesn't matter, moving on. I iron the interfacing onto the back of the material for the band, then fold it in half and decide to add a little bit of decorative trim. I don't want this right on the edge since I have to leave a seam allowance for the top of the hat to be attached. I try pinning it on at 3 quarters of an inch from the edge, which would leave me with half an inch to either side, but I think that's going to look weird, so I move it up to half an inch and stitch it on by hand. I'll pin the short sides of the band together, and we'll sew that in a minute, but first I use a needle and thread to gather the entire edge of the circle piece. This is kind of tedious, so I won't show the whole process. Just make sure you go all the way around. Then making sure you backstitch at both ends, sew the ends of the band together to create a circle. Clip your threads and fold the seam open, then fold the band in half. Doesn't that look nice? This is right side out though, so I'm actually going to flip it, so the decorated side is to the inside. This is the way it needs to be to attach the top of the hat. Make sure the gathered top is turned right side out, and then slide it into the band so the right sides of the material are together. You'll line up the gathered edge of the circle with the raw edge of the band. Pin it all together. Once it's all pinned, my threads are in the way. 
so I knot them together and cut the tails. It's already pinned, so I won't need to make any more adjustments to the gathers. This just keeps them from coming undone. You might have an easier time sewing this by hand, but I like to make things difficult on myself, so I do it by machine. Wiggle that in there, and... Let's move the camera so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I say kind of because I'm right-handed, so I know my hand will be in the way a lot. I line the edge of my sewing machine's foot up with the edge of the band, because I know that gives me exactly a one-quarter inch seam allowance. Then I carefully sew the hat top and band together. This is so small that it's best to go really slow. I'm sewing in real time here, which is something I don't show in videos very often because of how long it makes them. Most of the time, my sewing videos are sped up anywhere from 300 to 800 percent. So if it seems like I'm working really fast most of the time, well, that's why. Most projects take me at least a few hours to complete, but I also don't time myself. It's hard to be creative on a strict timeline, so I tend to just work at projects as I can, sneaking in a few minutes here and there. And there it is, our cute floppy hat. This is going to be so adorable on him. But I do want to finish that raw edge, just to keep things tidy. So I pop this back on the machine and finish that seam with a zigzag stitch. This is where the video is sped up as usual. I trimmed those last threads, and now the hat is finished. Let's try it on. Poor guy, sitting there naked for months, and the first thing I make him is a hat. Oh, but it's so cute. He's going to make an adorable little bard. The band may be a little tall, but I can remake this with a smaller band pretty easily. It's not bad for a first try. And that's all for today. Thanks for watching. Bye.